tutorial about the classroom information tab. This is the probably the most customized one that you'll need to make because your classroom is going to be different than anyone else's classroom. Start off by giving you two different um, divider pages here, one black and white in case you want to print it out on colored paper or just to have a black and white copy version. First section here is going to be helpful students. Um, this is essential for your substitute so that they have some go-to people in the class, ones that will reliably give them um, information that's true. You may not be able to create this and it may need to be changed throughout the year. And you may not be able to create it right at the beginning because you may not know your students well enough yet. But as you do, go ahead, there's spot for two students per. You can, um, again, adjust this. This is a table format. So if you right click in here, you're able to add, delete rows, um, insert more if you need to. I did it for eight periods, but you may have less. So again, you can customize this to how you might need it. Okay. Uh, once you are done, we'll upload that into the OneNote into that section. All right. The next section is classroom procedures. Now this is the one that really procedures change classroom to classroom, teacher to teacher. So I've put in some that um, I use in mine, but I've also put a generic one at the bottom for you to fill out for specific procedures that you may have in your classroom. So bathroom procedures and attendance procedures are on this first page. Second page, arrival and dismissal procedures. Again, things that are unique maybe to your school or your class. Where's the first aid kit? And then I also suggest putting your nurse in here, okay? Where are supplies? Um, maybe not the supplies for the lesson because those are in the lesson plan, but what if your students need extra pencils or your the substitute needs a pen or, you know, paper or whatever? So where can they find supplies in the classroom? And this could also be in the office, like what if they needed extra paper, those type of things. So it might be office supplies. All right, assembly procedures. If you have an assembly, please make sure that those procedures are in there. Center work procedures. I do centers in my classroom, so I need to put my procedures in there and how centers work. Um, you can change that by clicking on here to change it to whatever procedure you would like. And then here is another one. Um, here's one that is your just your classroom procedures that does not have a procedure in there. My recommendation is to, if you wanted to make an additional one, you can just duplicate it. So duplicate slide. So then you have a master copy. Um, you may change procedures year to year. You might want more. So as the year goes on and you decide that what you have is insufficient. Okay. The next section is the class roster, okay? So um, this again, I would go ahead and right click and duplicate so that I have one for every class. I can go right up here and second period, All right? So now I have one for first period, second period type in your students' names, and then if they have a name that um, people tend to mispronounce, try to put a phonetic spelling there. It is really hard when you're a substitute and there's names that you're not familiar with and you have to call them out and you don't want students to be embarrassed about how teachers um, pronounce their names. Um, my student, Josue, he constantly had people saying Joe Sue. So uh, make sure that you put something in there that um, people will know. Maybe don't use the, the phonetic spelling with the symbols because not everybody knows what they are. So um, just some sort of phonetic spelling so that if someone came in, they could say the name. All right. So you'll have to, one of these per class, okay? We'll look at the one note here and I'll show you how those go in. Okay, and then I might move my, so that I can import them together, 
Um, I'm going to put my roster and then my seating chart right after it. I've started putting in this seating chart. Let's see. I don't like how that. You're going to want to make your seating chart be like your classroom. And this is really pretty easy in, in PowerPoint. It gives you the opportunity to make all kinds of different um, shapes and sizes and you can make this fit your classroom and then I'll show you how you can put your students names in I'm trying to make that there we go that's better all right so I have this group table in the middle right here and then I have two desks together on either side I'm going to show you how to insert a shape here so you're going to go to insert shape and for me, I have lots of just regular desks. So once you get one that's the size you like, you can just um, duplicate it. For some reason, PowerPoint always makes them colored and that is not something that I would like. I'd like a nice open space there so that I can type in the names. So you have to go up to this shape fill section here and put no fill. Okay. And then I make sure the outline is black because sometimes it's the color of the shape. All right. So there you have a shape um, that is similar to that one. And now I'm going to right click, copy, right click again and paste, maybe. Copy. Oh, it copied the background. Let's go ahead and undo that. And I'm going to lock that background. So it doesn't do that again. All right, so let's insert another shape. Looks like it may have locked that background as well, which is fine. We'll just create another one that is the same size. Again, we'll go in, tell it to no fill. Looks like it's already, nope, it's blue. We can see it better here. So definitely want to go in and change that shape outline to black. Um, let's see. I'm going to move it right next to uh, the other one. Okay. And you kind of get the gist there on how you do that. You can also, like I have in my back, a circle table. So I can go over here. And just give landmarks in the classroom. Again, I'm going to change it to black and have a white. Okay. And so you could name that group table or whatever you would like to do. But in order for us to, um, you could print out a blank one and just write in their names or you could type it in. So I'm going to insert a text box. Okay. And I'm going to write Joel. Joel's one of my former students. And I'm going to move it so that is inside the seat, the desk there, so that they know where they sit. Now, sometimes you've got longer names. So let's uh, insert another text box. And all right, maybe I have a Katrina. That's a longer name. And it is not going to fit inside the box the way that I have it. Okay, so I'm gonna need to highlight it. Highlight the name. And then I can make it go down a little bit. All right, so I still need to move it. Move it so it's in the middle there. Okay, so you're gonna go around and be able to um, have all the students in their seats. Now, one thing that I would do before I started putting students in seats is to make a copy for each class period. So I'm gonna duplicate this slide and then I'm gonna move it down so that it is behind, whoops, went a little too fast there. That's okay. It happens and we're gonna come up. Okay, so that's right behind the second period roster. So here's second period roster, right behind it is the seating chart. So I'm gonna go up here and again, I gotta change the, I gotta unlock it here. Well, 
that one is broken. So we will duplicate. Let's see, is it going to let me do it on this one? Hmm. That's probably locked. Unlock. Let's see what we got going on here. Interesting. All right, so there's that. Okay. There we go. Gosh, sometimes it's hard to find those text boxes. So you're going to go in here and you can change it to parking period. My first period one, so first period. All right, usually isn't that difficult. I don't know why that one did that. Let's go back over here real quick. All right, so once you have that set up, so you've got first period, second period here, <clears throat> you're going to want to notate which slides these are. So this is slide 26 and 27. So I'm gonna print those. Remember changing to 26 through 27. Print. Right up comes my location finder. I'm gonna go down to classroom info. And I've already pre-put in class roster and CD chart, seating chart for classes one through eight. Um, now, clearly, I have planning periods. I don't know where they're going to be this year, so I've just gone, gone ahead and made them all. I can delete the ones that I don't need, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. All right, so I'm going to pick first period, hit OK, and there they are. Okay, um, if I did not have an eighth period, I could right click and delete. Okay, you can rename them. So if you wanted to put you know, math or English or whatever it might be, um, you're welcome to do that as well, okay? Classroom procedures are gonna go the same way. Once you've filled them out in PowerPoint, notate what slides they are, and then print them to this section in the OneNote notebook, okay? All right, hopefully that was helpful. Um, the hardest part is getting your um, seating charts done, but there is, a blank one in there for you so you'll be able to find that and then also I inserted in here because you may want something completely different in your classroom section maybe there's something unique to your classroom that you want to make sure that the substitute knows about so I've left a blank sheet um, that you can add to as you see fit for your classroom